Hey everybody, welcome back to another Cool Tool Show and Tell. Today my special guest once again is Sophie Wong. Sophie is a designer and a maker whose work has been featured in Make Magazine. She writes articles and tutorials for Hackspace Magazine and Adafruit. You can find all her work over on sophiewong.com. Sophie, thanks for joining us again today. What did you bring to show us this time? So today I wanted to talk about uh, an app that I've been using for some 3D printing projects mm -hmm. and it's called Scandi Pro and it allows you to use your phone as a 3D scanner. So I've been scanning, I've been scanning people's heads uh, <laughs> and, and then 3D printing them and the resolution's pretty, pretty great. So this is my husband, Kim, the tiny little... Kim. I have a couple because I had to do some tests. And then I printed him near full size. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm doing myself too. So here's a little bald me. So I put a wig cap on so I could get my actual shape of my head. And I'm going to do some some 3D modeling projects to 3D print some like helmets and stuff like that. So it's kind of where I'm going with this. But um, yeah. It's a pretty cool app. It's a subscription model app. So you, um, it's just kind of annoying that all apps are subscriptions nowadays, but it's just the way of things. And I've been using it a lot. So it's been making sense for me. Um, also what's been useful in using that app is I'm pairing it, not just, not just using it on my phone, I'm pairing it with my iPad. And that is a huge tip for getting a good scan with this app. Um, and the reason, the reason I recommend doing that is Scandi Pro uses the front facing camera to mm -hmm. scan. So when you're scanning the person or the object, you have to hold the phone away from you. So you can't see the screen as you're scanning it, but the app allows you to pair the phone with an iPad and use that iPad kind of as a display. So you can scan while you're looking at the iPad display, make sure you're getting all of the surfaces and um, anytime you lose tracking, you can glance over at the iPad to make sure you're getting everything lining up properly in the app. And yeah, uh, it takes about, took me about three to five minutes because I was moving really slowly to scan his entire head to move 360 degrees around my husband's head. Mm -hmm. But, um, and it took a few tries to get a nice clean scan, but it did work. And um, yeah, you can get full size 3D prints out of this thing. It looks great. And then are you doing any cleanup in another software? Or what are you doing after you've, you've got the scan? Yeah, so the scan comes in uh, pretty, uh, it's really detailed and it will also grab little um, weird ghost bits in the air. So there's a built-in cleanup function in the app, um, but it does require additional cleanup and I'm using Mesh Mixer for that. Mm -hmm. um, in Mesh Mixer, I'm also like smoothing it out a lot, reducing some of the details so that it, there are fewer polygons. And then I'm cutting it off on the bottom to make a nice flat plane so that it sits on my printer um, really well. But yeah, I'm using Mesh Mixer for that. Great. And have you used any other apps before this that kind of led you to this one? Or is it, is it really just like you, you found the one and the... the... Yeah. Um, I hadn't used any other... I, this is the first iPhone app that I've tried for this process, but previously, I scanned my own face using a Kinect. So it's kind of a, an older like hacky method for 3D printing. The mm -hmm. Kinect was that device that came out from Xbox years and years ago. And it has pretty decent scanning and it's used in a lot of maker projects that are kind of hacky um, track, like physical tracking projects. Um, and there is a way to use that to do a 3D scan, which I did and it's lower res, it's not as, um, it's not as detailed and it's, it takes a lot more setup. It's really more finicky to do it that way. Mm. It's so much easier to just whip out your phone and do this. In fact, I did a project recently with a local theater, um, performing arts theater where they went, wanted to scan one of their performers for an upcoming project. Mm -hmm. And um, the performer is not located 
where we are located in Seattle. Um, and we were able to do a scan. We were able to have the performer scan himself using his phone and send his scan to me so that I could work on it, clean it up and 3D print it out. So that was pretty cool to do that sort of over a long distance. That is really cool. And now are there any other scanning tips uh, in terms of lighting or things that work better for you? Yeah, um, definitely uh, even lighting. I think bright lighting is, is good, but I think what you really want is even lighting because what I found is if I had a light on and the scanner ended up moving across the light, just having that difference in light was enough to throw off the tracking. Um, and if you wanna do yourself, you absolutely need to have a partner. You need to have someone scan you so you can sit perfectly still, stare at one spot on the wall across from you, don't move while they move around you. And it will take a few tries to get it just right. Um, yeah, and also absolutely, if you have an iPad available, using the phone and the iPad together was a total game changer for getting a good scan. Cool, it's a great tip, Sophie. Uh, I appreciate you letting us know about it and you can find more information about this app down in the description for this video. And you can find more cool tool recommendations like this at cool-tools.org. <laughs> I gotta remember the org. All right, thanks again, Sophie. Thanks.